Understanding bidding on Facebook is one of the most important skills that you can know. And we're gonna cover lowest cost versus manual bidding and actually setting up a bid test. And if you've seen my two hour training, you can just skip to that time code right over there. Otherwise you wanna watch this all the way through and then check out the two hour training. I'll link to it at the end. Let's jump in right now. So let's talk the different bid strategies. The default and definitely the simplest and easiest is lowest cost. And that's what we're gonna use here, but you definitely want to know about the other types of bids and things like that. Not only so you can use it in the future, but also this is gonna teach you a lot about how the Facebook ad platform works. So there's constant auctions going on, you know, people who are less expensive to get in front of or are pretty likely to make a purchase uh, without spending a whole lot of money. So let's say your budget for the day is like $150. So it's going to kind of work its way through the cheaper auctions until it's hit like $150. So it's definitely going to spend right around 150 enter these auctions. And since your spend is a little low, it's going to ignore these up here. Whereas if your budget's like $1,000 a day, it has to show it to every single person in this audience to hit your spend. And that's often why it'll cost a little more when you're spending a whole lot. You know, some of those people may be really competitive to get in front of or to get to buy. But next up we have target cost. I don't really use this one a whole lot, but now we're getting into manual bids where you're actually gonna set an exact amount that you're going to bid. So usually I run lowest cost first and get some idea of what I'm getting purchases for. So saying, okay, I'm pretty consistently getting them for $25. So that's gonna be the target. That's where I'm profitable. So you're gonna set that bid at let's say $25, $24, something like that. Target cost is going to really try to be like exactly acquiring a customer for $25. So it's gonna bid right at 25 and then go down to like 20 and then up to 30. So I haven't used target cost in years. I just haven't found the results quite as good. And I think the other manual bids are quite a bit better. Okay, next up we have bid cap. So we're gonna set the exact amount that we're willing to bid. In this example, again, we'll say it's right at $25. It could be anything. And in this example, we're actually not going to bid on any auctions that are more expensive than that, even a little bit more expensive. So it'll be right at 25. So none of these auctions above this, it's going to enter. So the benefit of this is you can really control how much you're able to pay to acquire a customer. The downside is sometimes it's very, very low volume or very, very low spend for the day. You know, it's not actually that uncommon where there's just none of the cheap auctions at all and you spend zero dollars for the day. Okay, so then my favorite is cost cap. And so you're setting the manual bid and it's gonna to try to kind of average, you know, if you set it at 25, it's gonna to try to get you purchases for 25 or less and mostly exists under here, but it can kind of reach up into a little bit more expensive options. You know, if it says, oh, this is a really good person to show it to, I can still keep your average amount really good. So this is kind of the best of both worlds where you're actually hitting a little bit more of your spend and reaching a little bit above when it makes sense, but you're still keeping things very, very manageable. Okay, so let's look at, so that was a day that's kind of moderately competitive. Here's a day that's really good where there's a lot of cheap auctions to enter. So under lowest cost, suddenly, you know, you could spend your whole $150 and not have to go into more expensive ones. So your average amount you're getting per customer for the day is going to be really good. It's going to be a really good day for you. That's on the lower spend. And then let's say you're at a lot higher, like $500 a day, you're not actually having to go to the very top because there's all these more affordable options that you can choose. And under this day for target cost, you can reach your full spend. There's a lot of different auctions for you to enter. For bid cap, you probably can reach a decent amount of spend um, and actually hit that because there's a lot of cheap auctions for it to enter. And then, you know, you have even more auctions and it can hit even more spend with cost cap. But what happens if you have just an extremely competitive day where it's really expensive to get in front of people? Well, if you're under lowest cost, it's going to, you know, have to spend your full budget. So it's going to start here and kind of work its way up. 
and the average amount you're spending for a purchase is gonna be you know, way up in the $35, $40. So you'll spend the full amount, but not get very good results. If you do target cost, you know, it can reach up here a little bit, but you're not gonna get a lot of spend for the day. And you know, you have very limited bid cap. You'll get probably like $2 of spend for the day because you can only show it to a couple people right here and it's not able to reach up into any of these auctions to try to get results. And then under cost cap, it can reach up a little bit into some of these auctions that are happening around here, but you're probably not going to hit your spend for the day. So here is kind of how things on average look over time. So this is lowest cost, where you're gonna be spending the same amount every single day, no matter how competitive the market is. So your results, like your cost per purchase, if it's really high, that's bad. If it's low, that's really, really great. So it's really gonna fluctuate the kind of results that you're getting as the market is changing. Whereas if you're bidding manually, like with cost cap, and you set it at $20, it will fluctuate definitely, but you're gonna be relatively close to getting purchases for $20, but on days where it's super competitive, you're gonna hit maybe nothing in spend, and then days where you can get purchases really good, there's those low auctions to enter, then you're actually gonna hit the full amount of spend. So you could say, okay, I'm willing to spend $200, whereas most days you're only gonna hit a fraction of that because it's basically just picking off the uncompetitive uh, auctions and kind of working its way up to $20 and then it has to stop. So I actually like running both of these at the same time because then, you know, I'm getting consistent sales with varying results, but then on really competitive days, you know, I'm not losing money on the cost cap. And then on really good days is actually going to hit its spend where I can generate twice as many sales on those days. And actually I use automations so that my spend for the day, I'm actually based off results, scaling it up or scaling it down. So my spending looks a little bit more like this. Whereas if there's a bad day, I'm gonna start pausing things or turning down spend. And if it's a really good day, I will boost the spend and spend a lot more. And then I also have cost cap going at the same time. So on this day, we get a crazy amount of sales because it's super uncompetitive. We can get amazing deals like getting purchases. Whereas on this day where the purchases were terrible, you know, I'm not spending any here and I've really turned down the spend here. So I'm not actually losing that much money. But let me show you how I set up bid test. So I like using cost cap and when you create the campaign, you'll wanna switch it from lowest cost to cost cap and then we'll be able to actually set the bid within each ad set. Now I will often do one campaign that has maybe four or five ad sets, possibly three if I have a little less budget to put toward it. I generally want, let's say a minimum of, let's say I'm trying to get customers for $20, I would say like a minimum of $100 a day, but it would be even better if I could get like $400 or $500 a day. So with this campaign, we want each ad set or audience to be identical. And we want all the ads within that ad set to be identical as well, because we only want to be testing the different bid amounts against one another. If you have a campaign that has an ad set that is doing really well, you can actually duplicate that and run it as a bid campaign. So then we're gonna see how each bid compares against one another. We can also see how those manual bids compare against an identical ad set in a lowest cost campaign, if that makes sense. In this example, we're gonna test four different bid amounts. And the nice thing is if we've been running lowest cost campaigns, we can really see how our performance has been, the amount we're getting sales for, and use that data to help us choose what these four different bid amounts are. So it's gonna be completely unique to you and your product. A big piece of it is how much you can spend to acquire a sale, acquire a customer. So that's $25, you'll likely have one of those bids be right around that number. I will typically make this campaign a CBO because I've found that that just tends to perform better. And you can also kind of see what's doing best by what is diverting the most spend toward. So I'll give some examples going back to this chart from earlier. In this example, let's say one of the bids that we place is $16. So our cost per purchase is gonna be somewhere around the $16 range, but the amount of spend that it actually hits is going to really vary a lot. Some days it may get no spend, some days it may 
hit kind of our full spend if it's a really, really good day. And you can see if we run a test on a lower cost per purchase bid that we may be getting no spend. Um, in some examples, my lowest bid, I've actually got one penny of spend over like the 10 day test that I ran. Sometimes it can actually make sense to have one test where you're bidding a lot higher than you wanna go. So if you're trying for a $20 sale, actually bidding something at like $40 or something like that, because basically you're just saying, I'm willing to bid up to this amount to get in front of a customer. And sometimes you can actually outcompete people. I know some people bid like $100 or stuff like that and really push out their competition and then lower the amount or things like that. Uh, sometimes you can get in front of someone that makes like a huge purchase or is insanely valuable or things like that. So often I'll throw in one that's at least a little bit higher than my target just to see how that performs. And since we're bidding a little more, we're a lot more likely to get to or come close to what we said is the daily spend for the day, kind of like when we do lowest cost. The bid amounts that you select depend a little bit more on your goals. If one of your top goals is just getting purchases for as little as possible and is a little less important that you're driving a consistent amount of sales, you may wanna test some lower bids, but you can definitely test some higher ones if you still have a pretty strong goal of hitting enough spend. And you do wanna run this in conjunction with lowest cost campaigns because those are actually going to hit their spend no matter what. It's not an exact science, but I do wanna give an example of how I might set up a campaign. So let's say our target is getting purchases for $20 and we've been able to do that with our lowest cost campaigns. I would go through and look at, okay, what's the best day we've ever had? Okay, this best day we were getting purchases for $12. So I would often set that as the lowest possible bid because I know it is possible, it's just the very best performance we've ever had. Then I could say, okay, our average is somewhere around $19, $20. I would likely set one bid slightly below that just so we're picking off the really good auctions, but we know we can drive some volume to that. Then for the third one, I do a test right around what we're willing to spend or maybe a tiny bit above. And then one that's a little bit higher just to see how that higher bid performs compared to the other one. I'm primarily doing this with cold audiences, showing it to new people. If someone's in your really warm and hot audience, you probably wanna do lowest cost so you can actually get in front of everyone and you're hitting your spend for the day because those are so profitable. So often with these manual bid tests, I am looking for at least one bid where I'm getting really, really good results even if it's not a whole lot of volume and spend on average. And then another one where we can just get slightly better results than our lowest cost campaigns and get some level of volume and some level of spend for the day, even if it's less than our lowest cost campaign. You could easily do manual bids at like cost cap 13, 16, 20, and 30, or any slight variation of that. What I found is really helpful is let's say our cost cap bid of $18 just absolutely crushes it, we could then do another bid test where we test other bids right around there, like 16, 17, 18, and 19, and see how those perform. You also have to factor in, you know, the markets are constantly shifting. Uh, cost cap bid of $18 may do really well, and then it gets more competitive, and then it really doesn't hit the spend. If you haven't seen my two hour Facebook ad tutorial that takes you from beginner to expert, that is absolutely a must watch. And it's super easy to skip past the bidding section. Otherwise, check out my video on boosted posts versus paid ads, but you definitely need to see that two hour training.